have you ever wanted to know the deepest, darkest secrets of an elite marathon runner? And her boyfriend. And her boyfriend. No holds bars today. We are answering all of your questions. Let's get into it. I asked you to send in your questions, not just for me this time around, but for this guy as well. This is Daniel, cameraman, aficionado, editor, chef, all round good human, also boyfriend, not just here to follow me <laughs> around with the camera, as some of you may think. So we're going to take in turns to question each other. Let's do it. Who's going first? Uh, who's got more questions? I think you've got more questions. All right. Because you're more popular, as usual. It's sort of my YouTube channel. <laughs> all right, let's go. All right, okay, we've got the first one here. If you could go on an easy long run... Mm. with any three people for a nice long chat, who would you go with? And it says here, dead or alive. As soon as you hear dead or alive in any of these questions, <laughs> you know that you're expected to have a really interesting, I feel like this is a, prepared answer. This is a question that comes up a lot in podcasts, for like who would you yeah. go for a meal with? Who would you talk to? I'm just going to go off the top of my head, Elliot Kipchoge. Nice. I'm looking at the records over there. <laughs> so right, Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Shania Twain. Yeah, I knew it. Shania Twain had to be in there. Kip Joe, you could teach us all how to run and we could have a good sing song while we're at it. Maybe it would become a run walk. Who knows? I'm not sure how much of a runner Freddie was or Shania is. Well, he was a performer on stage, so I sweat a lot. So it would be a good time. Hopefully that will happen next Sunday. See you there. So first question for you. Mm -hmm. This actually mm. is the second most asked question. I know what this is. We'll get onto the most asked question later. Second most asked question that anyone sent in was for you. Yeah. And it is, how's the running training going? It's not really going. I've only just got back to it. I went on a 16 minute run today. Wow, that's big. Yeah. That was it's a nearly big, a whole mile for you. Big. Unfortunately, I got a little injury about a week before Copenhagen. Philly set me a fast park run and I smashed my 5k PB. But unfortunately, the day after, I went out for a little run and I got a pain in my foot. Not and good. I was like, oh. And then with all the, with all Copenhagen, well, life's been a bit crazy recently. I only just managed to go and see a physio uh, this week. I mean, I blame the coach personally. Yeah, so do I. Dreadful coaching. The, isn't it? the training diaries of Daniel will be back. Don't worry. Yeah, we will document it. Don't worry. Okay, what have we got here? What particular benefits do you experience from having a professional coach rather? rather than e.g. making up your own training plan? Firstly, I categorically would not be able to make up my own training. Hi. Hi. I like not having to second guess myself. I trust in my coaching abilities and I think I can write some cracking plans for other people. But it's a little bit like following your own advice and being able to set what you know is the right thing and then actually go and do it and not worry that yeah. it's the wrong thing. So there's that. Um, I mean, Helen as a coach and as an athlete has way, way more experience than I do from being an incredible athlete, traveling the world, competing on the world stage, winning medals at major championships. And so I've got that knowledge to absorb and being a sponge all the time, just trying to absorb all of that from her. And it teaches you to learn how you want to coach yourself and other people as well from working with a coach and understanding what works for you, understanding their different practices and experiencing that that relationship, I guess. It's not just her setting my training and then I go off and do it. It is a conversation. And I think you learn so much from having that sounding board, that person there for advice, yeah. and also to tell you when to stop, because that's also a big part of yeah. a coach's role as well. And sometimes us athletes aren't great at doing that ourselves. Um. Daniel. Yes. Are you proud of Philly? Do you feel in her shadow behind the scenes? Love you both, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, Sophia. Thanks. Love, love you, you too. Love you too. Uh, yeah. Do you feel in my shadow? Physically impossible, firstly, because she is so small. <laughs> I'm actually average height. She's very small. No, but in all seriousness, of, of course I'm proud of, of Philly. I mean, it's just, oh, what she does is insane. I, I, I honestly don't understand how she does it, how she pushes us, how she pushes, how she... <laughs> 
how she pushes herself to like an unbelievable limit over such long distances and still manages to kind of laugh and have fun about it. And yeah, it's just incredible, really. And no, I, I, I don't feel in her shadow at all. I think maybe you guys on the other side of the screen don't see what I do because obviously I'm not in the videos so much, but um, I love what I do for the YouTube channel. It's a complete joint venture. Absolutely. We, we do it 50-50 and um, we both love what we do and, and the parts that we play in the, in, in the YouTube channel. So no. I, I do not feel... And I'm proud of you as well because Aww. you're a cracking editor. The YouTube channel <laughs> wouldn't exist without you. And this guy's taught himself everything that he knows and that he does. So, um, yeah. Proud right back at you. This is turning into a soppy video. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Uh, did you enjoy sports day at school? Also, how would you encourage more kids into running? I loved... <laughs> sports day the kids i was racing against in the egg and spoon race probably didn't love me because sometimes you there is such a thing as being too competitive sometimes but yeah as a very competitive person i loved sports day it's up there for me as a kid counting down the days of the year to things like christmas day your birthday going on holiday sports day uh, and probably non-uniform day as well. In terms of encouraging more kids to take up running, I think your local athletics club that are very affordable most of the time and park run, which is obviously free, are great resources to tap into. Most athletics clubs have got a really good young athletes group with volunteer coaches that deserve to be knighted up and down the country. And that's where my love for running started. But also I think it's about letting kids try as many sports as they can. Mm. I did karate, basketball, netball, hockey, dance. I was a very extracurricular kid. And then I found running and it was another level up for me. But I think for some kids, you know, it might not be running and that's okay. They might fall in love with football or lacrosse. I'm trying to think of some other random sports archery totally valid if that's the thing that lights their soul on fire and that's going to ignite that commitment motivation those skills that they can take with them outside of their sport as well i think that's important and they should just follow what they love to do daniel yes will you be featuring in another park run vid fancy dress or no yes yeah, yeah. that was fun although it didn't look like I was having fun. Uh, you've said it now. That was fun. We're going to get the bed sheet out every weekend <laughs> for your easy run now, apparently. Well, I think we should definitely do another fancy dress one. Mm. Mm. I would like to have an outfit this time that's not for aged seven children. So and I would get... like an outfit that I can actually breathe in. Kind of struggling to breathe in. Pumpkin chafe. That would be nice. How would you cope slash react if you were told you could no longer run? I mean, I, I don't think I would cope. How would you cope if I couldn't run? That I wouldn't cope either. Because Philly's one of these people that if she doesn't run for, I mean, even a day, but, you know, a couple a couple of days, if she hasn't run injury, illness, she is crawling up the walls and driving me insane. So yeah, I'm not sure I would cope. It would be tough. I mean, you hear you are what you do and running is my identity, whether that's a good <laughs> thing and a healthy thing or not. I think I'd have to pull myself into some other sport if I was physically not able to run anymore or just some evil person had come along and cast a spell on me that meant I wasn't allowed to run anymore but I'd be sad about it obviously next question this is actually from our old neighbours in London so uh, hi Vicky hi Vicky hi Aidan Hi, Hi Breffney. Oh, hi, Breffney. Uh, Daniel, are you a full-time editor now or is there still acting slash voiceover stuff in the mix? Ooh. Um, at the moment, it's mainly editing. I won't lie. Um, for anyone out there who doesn't know, um, I'm a trained actor. I went to a Ooh. drama school, darling. So since COVID, acting's been a bit difficult. It hasn't come back the way that it was beforehand. And unfortunately I went through a little transition trying to get into more film and TV just before COVID hit. And so yeah, I'm not doing as much of that. I have amazing agents acting and voiceover and I love them to bits, but it's just, it's a bit of a hard it's industry. More, there's more people than there are acting jobs. Isn't yeah, there? I mean, there's the fun stat that we got told at drama school all the time that 99% of all actors are unemployed, which is, you know, <laughs> brilliant. I need an artistic outlet. so doing the editing, you know, filming, creating these videos is a real fun creative outlet for me. So like, you know, it's not affecting me too bad, which 
a couple of months ago, it was it was pretty dire. It means you can do both, doesn't it? Having the flexibility of editing. Yeah, and it's so flexible. If Netflix you know. came along and decided to take you away for a series, then I'd have to find another cameraman. But. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't say no. But yeah, we're just juggling those at the moment. Ah, okay, this is a good one. Will you be expanding your training offering, as in one session consultancy, for example? Interesting. One-on-one -on -one sessions isn't something that I've necessarily considered before, but if there's interest out there for a video call or a phone call with me to talk about your training or your goals, I guess, let me know in the comment section. Mm. It's something I might consider doing in the future. But at the moment, I've got my one-to-one -one coaching books, which are full to the brim. I've got a waiting list for that as well. But there is something I'm working on in the background to make coaching something that's a little bit more accessible for people that perhaps can't afford the monthly one-to-one -one coaching or want something that's a little bit more transferable to helping them coach themselves. So I'll leave it there at the moment and make it sound a little bit vague and mysterious, but I'm working on something to bring to you in the coming months that is an addition to my coaching offering. And if you wanna be the first to find out when that does launch, just make sure you're on my mailing list, which you can sign up for on my website, which is linked in the description. Next question, Daniel. Mm -hmm. mm. When's the first race and will it be documented? Got any races on the plan? Oh. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> We did, didn't we? We had you had to sign me up for a 10k in mm. this month, July. So that's, yeah, not happening. that's not happening. But hopefully, by the end of the year, there'll be a marathon. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a 10k, but definitely 5k. Maybe another park run, but maybe a 10k. We'll see. But yes, it will absolutely be documented. Yeah, one hundred. I've got anything to do with yeah, it. Yeah, it will be documented. Don't you worry about that. So stupid question. There no are no such thing. Yeah, no such thing. When I do a 10K or a half marathon organized run, I get a goodie bag, t-shirts and stuff. As a pro, do you get a goodie bag? Some and some. I mean, it, there's no like separate kind of you do and you don't. If you leave a major race, you go down the finish funnel and you can usually just pick one up. It's not like I'm not allowed, but sometimes I, I won't take it. I could the... be wrong, but it's the set. It's not like you get a different goodie bag from... No, 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 no. No, yeah. Or a different medal or anything. No. Um, not at the smaller races, and sometimes I'll just take the banana and leave the leaflets, because sometimes that's what's in there. Mm. Is this where we ask if Philly is treating you nicely? Oh, goodness sake. Uh, Matthew asks, what's your mental approach slash techniques for dealing with tough moments in races? Whoa, big question. Could talk on this for at least half an hour. <laughs> yeah. I would recommend, if you haven't, to go and watch the Copenhagen race video, Copenhagen race recap, maybe even the taper video as well, because I talk a lot about my mental approach in those videos. I worked extensively with my sports psychologist for that and hold her responsible for a lot of the improvements I made. Very appreciative of that. And it was a really beneficial thing for me to do to focus on that. But if I was to slim that down and give you just a few tips, I would say try some visualization, work on that, visualizing positive race experiences or the outcome that you want to happen leading up to the race. Find a mantra, a short, memorable mantra that you can go to to help you in tough points in a race. I'm fit, I'm fast, I'm in control something like that, for example, and smile. I spoke about it before, bounce off the crowd, give them a smile, they'll give you a smile back. The energy you get from that is amazing, especially when it gets tough in those points of the races. How did Daniel learn to edit so amazingly well? Short answer, YouTube. Whoa, Yeah. that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Because you're watching YouTube. To learn, learn about editing, to edit YouTube, YouTube videos, videos that then go on YouTube and people watch. watch on YouTube. Whoa. How much is talent and how much is hard work? I don't know whether I can put a percentage on it, but it's hardly anything talent, I would say. I was a very average kid on the track and I've worked really hard and learnt how to train and stacked up those weeks and months and years to be where I am. And I think you can be a very talented runner and not get very far because you don't do any of that. So mostly hard work. <laughs> this is actually kind of a question for me, but it's about you. Will you ever force Daniel to run a marathon? Yes. 
No, I'm not running a marathon. Are you sure? No. <laughs> I swear you said maybe last time I mentioned this. All right, okay. If we make a big series on YouTube about it. If we can get 5,000 likes on this video. All right, 5,000 likes. Go on. I dare you. <laughs> Go on. I'm writing the training plan tonight. <laughs> Amazing. I'm so scared. Now we have got to the most asked question. Do, do, do. Can you put a sound effect for that bit? Like, like that sound effect. Do it like, again. Well, it's like the who wants to be a millionaire sound. Do it again. Do, do, do. Do, do. Yeah. Cool. But don't include, can you just take that bit out and yeah. not include me doing that bit? Yeah. The most asked question. <laughs> but before we Sorry. answer it. Now this isn't a sponsored video today, guys. There is no ad break in this video. But I did just want to say we made some merch. If you haven't heard, and it looks pretty cool if I do say so myself, so why not go and check it out at this website here, philibaldenmerch.com, or by clicking the link in the description below. And later this month, we might be releasing some hoodies and sweats. Back to the vid. All right, what you've all been waiting for? The most asked question. How did you and your boyfriend meet? I, I found him laying on the street. <laughs> <laughs> no. Surprisingly, we met on Tinder. Yeah. Would you believe it? Tinder. Which is not the sponsor of this week's video, but it would be so cool if it was, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because we could be like, look at us. You could have this. <laughs> um, we met on Tinder. Yeah. Quite a weird time of my life anyway. Mm -hmm. I was back from America for two and a half, three weeks at Christmas. So I had done my first term and I was going back in January. And I was I was bored. I downloaded Tinder. I wasn't looking for this, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, well, the rest is history. We went on three dates in... Four dates in a week. Four dates in a week. Yeah. And then I flew back to America. And it, even on the first date, actually, you were like, yeah, I'll come see you in America in a yeah. few months' time. So and that wasn't weird. And then we spent, like, majority of the first year together apart. And then the year after that, <laughs> the complete opposite when we locked down together in COVID. Real, real test of the relationship. Yeah, but we're still here. We made it. Yeah, so download Tinder if you're single. Yeah, hashtag who knows Tinder. What, who knows what could happen? <laughs> Okay, next question. This is, I feel like I need to say who this is from just because it's quite an interesting handle. Uh, Krusty Sock. Ooh, hello, Krusty Sock. Would like to say, would like to know, mm. uh, Daniel, can yes. you name one good thing about moving to Manchester? I dare you. One good thing. Well, there's many good things. Right. right? So List them off. One, okay, it's cheaper. Yeah. The people are friendlier. Friendly. You, the food's good. Is it? Well, you get bigger portions. True. Yeah, beer's cheaper. You get more for your money in terms of houses. Less traffic. The weather's fantastic. That's not true. <laughs> How do you adapt slash manage your training to unexpected sickness slash minor injury? <laughs> With great difficulty. No, uh, very relevant question. I had a virus last week, so training was almost a complete write-off. Gosh, there's so much to say on this, and it's really, it can be quite complicated sometimes, depending on what the issue is. So I think I'm actually just going to commit to making an entire video yeah. on this. We'll do, we'll do a video So on that, stay tuned for that, and sorry to not answer your question <laughs> yeah. immediately. But well, it's given me a good idea for a video. Yeah. Daniel. Yes. What are your honest feelings about running well if you'd asked me a month into running because i'm quite new to running i would have said i hate it um but i i like it now yeah success i can't believe i'm saying that i actually like running post injury um i went out i was like oh this is so nice missed it i've missed it he's a runner yeah so a tip for any any kind of newbies anyone who's starting who's in a, a month in a couple of weeks in or just wants to start but they go out for a run and they're like this is hell um <laughs> give it a couple of months mm -hmm. um once you gain a little bit of fitness you know it's cool that i can just go out for a half an hour run and be like ah I can just do this easily. It's not It's not that hard. I can talk to someone. It's Look cool. at him go. How can I know when I'm ready for a coach? I'm great at making plans and logging miles. So I don't think 
it's I'm going to just disagree with the question. I don't think it's a matter of being ready for mm. a coach or not. I think anyone can be ready for a coach no matter what level they're at, how long they've been running for. It's about finding a coach that can give you what you need. And there's different coaches out there that will be, mm. you know, differently suited for different people. If you're a complete beginner, you know, it might be a coach that can help you get started and educate you about different types of runs and the structure of things. And all the way up to if you're doing, you know, an ultra marathon, you probably need someone that's got a bit of experience coaching people with mm. ultras. But if you're good at writing your own plan, that's great. It's about, I suppose, asking whether you could benefit from working with a coach in other aspects of your running for the feedback, to ask questions about things that you're maybe not as good at setting for yourself, learning about your fueling strategy, refining your warm up, and maybe asking them to input onto your plan that you know you're quite happy with. Everyone's different, and some people don't need to work with a coach or don't want to, and that's fine. But yeah, finding the coach that ticks the boxes for you, and yeah, just go out and have those conversations. I think. Mm -hmm. Next question mm -hmm. for you: How supported do you feel? By Philly. Yeah. Hard hitting question. Yeah. So, you know, you you guys hear me cheering a lot um, in the races, um, but what you guys don't see is that when I'm sat there at the editing desk, Philly is shouting in my ear, go Daniel, go, you can edit this video. You're the best editor ever. You know, so I really, really do feel supported. Uh, what can a casual jogger learn from an elite athlete and what should you not try at home? Probably the number one thing is what not to do. Mm. If said elite athlete is quite happy and willing to share their mistakes with you, then I think that's probably one of the biggest things you can learn because the more experienced someone is, probably the more mistakes they've made. So if they can talk about the mistakes that they've made so that you don't have to make them or at least you make them less bad then I think um, that's a good thing. What not to try at home? I don't think there's anything really within reason. Obviously, just have some running common sense with what you do at home or on your runs, I suppose. If you are fairly new to the sport and you've been doing park runs for six months, probably not the best idea to go and run 25 miles the next week without having built up your long run. So those sorts of things, um, how to periodize your training. Elite athletes are usually quite good with that. Consistency, I think, is probably a big one. Yeah, consistency is a big one. And I think if there's any elite endurance athlete that's not preaching that, they're lying because it is the absolute most important thing, being consistent with your training. Ooh, mm. an editing question. Mm. What video editing software slash website do you use to create the videos? Adobe Premiere Pro. Ooh, and is that expensive? Yeah, you have to pay a monthly fee for Adobe, which is a bit annoying. But if anyone's looking for a free software, there's a, uh, I'll put a link in the description. <laughs> what the F happened last week well it'll actually be two weeks ago by the time this video finally comes out uh because we had to film it three times thanks to some technical difficulties three times the last week that's in question uh what happened i got a virus that i didn't know about and trained through not I, I really didn't know about it though, so I just didn't quite feel right that we couldn't put our finger on what it was. So I DNF'd two sessions, one on Tuesday in the pouring rain, one on Friday, and a drunk driver drove into my car in the middle of the night, wrote it mm. off, police came and woke us up at 5am. Yeah. Poor little Yaris is now off to the uh, the scrapyard. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think that was about it. That was enough. We got rained on really, didn't we? Yeah, it was a, it was a hard week. It was, yeah. It was definitely a low. <laughs> it's all good now. Yeah, we're all good. Everyone's going to think that... <laughs> Just chew your own f***ing water. Um, Daniel? Yes? Do you cook for Philly? Do you, do, you cook, do you cook for me? No. No? I don't think... No? No. We have a private chef. Private chef. We have a private chef. Mm, yeah. Yes. His name is Carlos. Daniel. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I I cook everything in this yeah, house. Yeah, a little bit. Every 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 other day or so. I cook all the time. I am the private chef. Do you ever feel like not wanting to run? Frequently. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's a very common, very normal feeling when you're trying to run every day or most days. And accept that, I would say. But if you find yourself feeling like you're not wanting to run and there's no genuine excuse for why you shouldn't, e.g. just don't really fancy it or it's raining or I want to watch TikToks, just do it. 
just get yourself out the door, trick your mind, do all the things that you can to get out, schedule to meet with a friend, put a podcast on, see if you can run a new segment, whatever it is, just get yourself out the door because once you're out, it's great. You never regret going for a run. I second that. Daniel. Yes. Daniel. I have a question for you. What is your PR, not for the 5K, oh. but for editing a video? Start to finish, how long has it taken you? Long form or short form? I'd say long form, like a YouTube video. Right, okay. Probably about eight hours, I think. Strong. Yeah, probably a day. So that's the marker to beat then when we run the marathon. Faster than you can edit a video. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. <laughs> you can, I mean, you could easily do that. I'm still not agreeing to this. <laughs> Anyway, no, but normally it takes about two two full working days. That's what I like. At least at least two at least two working days so I have enough time to kind of yeah. go through the process properly. But yeah, eight hours is my PR. Do you think you'll break any track PBs this summer after the marathon season? If you'd have asked me that a couple of weeks ago, it would have been a hard yes. It's now a soft yes <laughs> because having got ill the week before last, I've had to rethink a few things to be sensible, both with the short-term season of track races, but also the long-term goals of hitting the roads for the half marathon and the marathon later on this year. So we're using a bit more of a fluid summer schedule instead to key mm -hmm. off how I'm feeling as I get back into sessions again, but sadly not racing the British Championships. It will be sort of later, late July, August, if... I uh, get back on the track and run a few PBs. Yeah. No, it's sad that you're not racing the British champs. Mm. Um, but we are going to be there if anyone wants to come and say, uh, hi. say hi and support yeah. running, um, support all the other athletes. Yeah. In fact, tickets are on sale now. Yeah, go, go and get buy them. tickets come to the British Championships. Come say hi. This weekend, uh, we're going to be there on the Saturday and the Sunday. Not filming, just, just spectating and just enjoying spectating. watching some people run real fast, jump very high yep. and far and throw, throw things. Throw things. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to all of the field eventers out there. Last question for you. Oh. Sad. Yeah, I know. It's a bit like at Christmas when you get less presents than someone else. You've got else. loads of questions left. I know. Yeah. Well, sorry about that. Um, last question for you. Why do you do everything Philly says? News to me. Yeah, I don't. No. Yeah. We'd cool have far less arguments if, if I... If I did. Yeah, why don't you just do what you're told, Daniel? <laughs> no, don't, um, I'm not a dictator in this house, and as, oh, as you might think. Oi! <laughs> uh, how do you deal with competitiveness between running mates? Does it have a positive slash negative impact? I would say not so much of a thing, mm. really, these days, now that I'm grown up and a little bit more mature. Well, maybe I was when I did have that as a kid, which is totally normal when you're running with your friends and you've got a training group and you're all doing the same distances on the track. And maybe that's part of it in the team that I'm a part of. I'm the only female marathon runner at the moment on the team. The rest of the girls are doing 5K, 10K, 800, 1500. We're all doing different things and focusing on different goals. But also, if this is something that you experience and maybe you don't like it and you want to feel less competitive mm. with your training partners, just remember that you're not, just racing those people in any race, if it's a cross country or a track race, road race, whatever, you're racing everyone there, not just your training partner and your friend that also happens to be doing it. Yes, there might be some healthy rivalries, but at the end of the day, at the finish line, your friends, you need to be proud of them as well and know that their performance most of the time has zero impact on your own performance. So if you focus on yourself and what you want to achieve, you can also be happy for them and what they achieve because it's totally separate, really. This isn't a, uh, a question as such. It's more oh. of a visual aid. I'll okay. pop it up on the screen now, but I want to show Philly. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's a donut. I agree. Oh, another animal-related question. Mm. Can we get an introduction to your cats? Yes. Roll montage. So here we have suspect number one. State your name, sir. Hello, my name is Utrud, and I am the coolest cat in this house. Yes. Yes, you are. And here we have the second little kitty. Her name is Delilah, and she's very shy. Hi, gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not impressed. Leave me alone. Dream job other than being an athlete. 
I'd probably just go and copy you and say being an actor. <laughs> I was going to say editor. Being, really? <laughs> yeah, no, not the editing. You can keep that. Being on the stage, dancing, singing. Center of attention. No, <laughs> yes, but no. So whenever I go and watch a musical, I literally, for about 10 minutes afterwards, it used to be longer when I was a kid, because I was like, yes, I'm going to do this. I walk out and I'm like, I'm destined to be on the stage. I must audition for a West End play or whatever. Mm. But yeah, probably that. But I'd, I'd also need to learn how to act, sing and dance. So yeah. Yeah. I have saved the best question to last. Ooh, um, bold claim. Yeah. This is, well, okay, it's my favourite question. Whether okay. it's going to be yours, I don't know. Snog, marry, kill. It's a bit dramatic. Oats, pasta, potatoes. Okay, first of all, I hope you're okay, whoever's asked this question, because <laughs> that is not okay. Can you just repeat the options, please? Snog, marry, kill. Oats, pasta, potatoes. Right, well, I'm just going to change the question so that I feel okay answering it because I'm not going to be doing any of those things to any of these poor foods. Uh, we'll change it, I've decided, to eat every day, eat once in a blue moon, can never eat again. So, can never eat again mm. or kill. Uh, oh, it's a really tough one, but I'm going to have to go for pasta. And I love pasta. But you can categorically do more with potatoes than you can with pasta. You can make gnocchi. You can make... Mash. Mash. Chips. Chips. Jackets. Roasted. Roasted. Roshti. Roshti. Yes. Eat once in a blue moon. Potatoes. Already covered why. Fantastic. Eat every day. Would otherwise be classed as marry, I suppose. Oats. Shock. I mean, I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm not going to justify it. I don't need to. You all know why. Runners watching this. Oats. For life. Oats are king. Or oh, queen. Queen. Rule out questions. So Love the grind. That's... Excuse me. That's the last time that I include you in one of my <laughs> videos. <Yeah. laughs> Love the grind. <laughs>